Hello and welcome to my channel. Hope everybody is safe and well. Welcome to how to create a dynamic pivot query part two. This is going to be building on part one. In fact, we're going to be creating exactly the same results as part one, but I'm going to show you a more modern way of building a dynamic pivot query. So if you haven't checked out part one, there will be a link coming up on the screen if you want to go back and check that out. But this is the modern approach. Um, there's been a new function introduced recently that makes dynamic pivoting a lot simpler. As always with my videos, if you'd like to follow along, the scripts are available in the description. So we have here a simple script that I'm just gonna throw some data into a table for us to work with. Uh, and we can see we've got customer ID, product, and amount in that table, some perfect data for performing pivoting operations. This is a starting point. So this is a simple pivot. We're just looking to calculate the total amount for each product. So if I execute this query and show you the results, we can see for each customer ID, we can see their total amount spent on each of those products. But as we know, with a standard pivot query, it's quite static. So the problem we're facing is we can add new products all the time. Uh, I've got a little, little demo here just to, just to show that. So if I just insert an extra product of television, and if I go back to my pivot starting point, we can see that that is not actually included. In fact, I now need to actually edit my query to include television in the results. So I'll have to add it to the spreading elements and then also in the final select. So if we are adding new products all the time and obviously pivoting isn't specific to products, it can be anything, but anything that we're looking to pivot by, if that's constantly changing, we're adding values, then it's it's difficult to manage. So we need, a, we need an easier way to do things. So let's have a look at how we can build up a dynamic pivot query. And in this video, again, like in part one, we'll just be focusing on the dynamic building of the column list rather than the whole pivot query. So I'm just going to open a new query window and our starting point as always is just going to be to get a row set of the products we're working with in this case uh, and it's going to be a distinct row set. So if I'm just going to select the distinct product from DBO orders and we can see there uh, we've got nine products. I'm actually just going to go back and reset this table so it doesn't it won't include television just so we can test out that results at the end. So we've now got eight products so television isn't included and we'll be adding that later. So once we've got our distinct result set of products we then spoke about a function in part one called quote name and this allows us to add in a character surrounding our string and the default is square brackets and I'm just going to alias that as product so we don't lose that name. So we can see there we've got our result set of products within square brackets or square parentheses. Now, now once we've got that there's a new function available. Uh, I believe it was released in SQL Server 2017, uh, and because Azure SQL Database is always up to the latest version as well, it will be available in there. But I will put a link to the, the Microsoft Docs in the description. So there's a way, there's a function to help us build a character separated list of values. So let's have a look at that. Um, and to use this function, we're actually going to be, we want the distinct products to be the input. We don't want a massive list. So I'm actually just going to turn that into a derived 
table which I'll build out shortly. So the function is string underscore ag. And we can see here we can add an expression and a separator which will return in Varchar max. So the expression is going to be product and then the separator is just going to be a comma. That's going to come from and then we're going to move this into a derived table. And the reason we're using a derived table is we want the distinct operation to be performed before the string aggregation. Uh, we just need to add an alias. I usually alias my derived tables as D. So if I execute that query now, we can see compared to part one, we have got to a point where we've generated this list very quickly, very simply. So that's a new powerful function available in, uh, in Microsoft SQL. So now we need to build out a dynamic query, which once we've got this column list is actually quite straightforward. So I'll just hide that for now. Um, we're just going to declare two variables. One will be representing the query and the other will be representing the column list. I'm just going to change this to select at columns equals. So that's going to set our column value to the result of our string aggregation. And then we're going to build out our query. So I'm going to say set at query equals, well, open uh, apostrophe. It's going to be select customer ID. Uh, and we can really use our pivot start of what we're doing here. So this is going to be our column list and this is going to be our column list. So everything else around it, we just need to we just need to build up. So that's how I'm building this query. So it's probably good to always start with a static query and then look at how you can make that dynamic. It's, it's quite hard to write dynamic queries from scratch, but if you can, great. Uh, so that's gonna be a comma, and then we're gonna close that off. And then we're gonna add in our columns. So that's this part here that we're building. So the columns is going to represent from here to here. Then we need to go back to our, our string builder and say from. And this is where we create a derived table. So that's going to be customer ID, a derived table within the pivot, customer ID, product, and amount from DBO orders. Go back to pivot start, so we've now built to there. And then we're going to add in our pivot. Going to be pivot, open our parentheses, sum amount, we want the total amount for product in open parentheses. Uh, close off our, our string builder and in our column list again open the string builder close off the parentheses close off our pivot and then we're going to order by customer ID we don't need that in it's just so we can see the the results a bit more clearer so again, going back to pivot start, we've saved the hassle of typing out this part of the query. And then we just need to execute using SP execute SQL, pass in our query uh, variable, execute, and now we can see the results on the screen as expected. We'll do a final test of adding in a television product. Come back here, we're not gonna make any changes, we're just gonna expect 
a dynamic building of that column list to pick up that new product. Execute the query and we can see that television has now appeared as part of our pivot. So I really hope you have enjoyed that video. As you can see, string agra function makes it a lot simpler than what we were doing in part one. And if you are using SQL Server 2017 onwards or Azure SQL database, this is a much simpler approach. It's a lot more concise and easier to understand actually what you're trying to build when we're using the number of XML functions. It's hard to understand exactly what's going on, but this is quite straightforward. Uh, once again, the final query will be available in the description, uh, as I know it doesn't display on screen very well, uh, particularly when it's quite long. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Is there any more videos you'd like to see on Pivot or any other areas of data engineering or data analysis? Thanks a lot for watching.